Now, can you give an example? Of what, what one that saying? really hurt me is you told me I need a therapist because I believe in Jesus. No, that I one hurt me. No, I didn't. I said you need a therapist because Jesus isn't quite doing it for you. Hello, my dear friends. Today, we are going to be taking a look at a clip from the Impulsive podcast where Logan Paul and one of his co-hosts, George, have a debate about religion. Without further ado, let's get right into it. You guys, I've been bullying George. I've been bullying him so hard. I thought this was so funny, bro. <laughs> In the group chat, he's texting the Impulsive group chat, and he's like, guys, I was up all night just my pants like it was something in the lunch yesterday I, I was up i was up all night and i texted him i said more time to pray <laughs> Bro. dude me and logan have this combative like argument about jesus all the time and people always come it's up not to me combative, like, bro, i'm bro, encouraging you bro, to pray bro, bro, you have bro, extra bro, time bro. Might as well you are mean to me about then. my lord and savior and let me tell you something. he's my lord and savior too well i know that now it is true that jesus did die for all so in a sense logan paul is right here but if you do not acknowledge him as your lord and savior repent of your sins and follow him he's not really your lord and savior your lord is the world and things of the world now this is a bit of a debate in the theological community mostly between Arminian leaning and Calvinistic leaning ideologies, where one side says Jesus died for all, and the other side, the Calvinistic side, says he died for the select, a remnant, uh, the chosen. Now, I believe that Jesus died for all, but it is a whole debate which I won't get into. The Logan, as George just mentioned, is only looks at things that are backed in fact and science. And I, I understand that George looks at things that are backed or, or believes in things that are backed simply by faith and, 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 you know, age old storytelling. I mean, yes and no, I do. There's a lot of scientific fact that backs the Bible. Sure. George is right here. Christianity is not just about blind faith. There is a ton of proof that backs the Bible. And there's a ton of scientific evidence that not only proves the existence of a god but the christian god there is a fantastic book that i read many years ago called i don't have enough faith to be an atheist by frank turek and norman geyser and they get into the details and all the evidence that exists not only for the existence of a god but the christian god fantastic book and i highly recommend you guys check it out first of all every religion Muslims, Jewish people, Christians, they all believe well, that. Well, Georgie, that's the other thing. Oh, let Everyone, no, no, let him speak. Let well, him speak. Every, 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 you all think you're right. And you think that the Muslims are going to hell. And they think that you're going to hell. And the well, Jews I, I think I that. said that. You can't put words in my house. No, in his but, house. But, but you, you put do. words in his house. You can't let put him, words in my mouth. I never said that. Let him speak. If you believe in Christianity, it's what you think. You, know, I you think might not. That is, so, I don't think that is the case. See, th I think this is the problem, Logan. You assume so much that you like you don't know one Bible. What verse. happens to a Muslim when they die, George? I don't know. God says no one knows who goes to heaven or hell. That's in the Bible. But they do go to heaven or hell. Yes. Now this is where every Bible reading Christian should disagree with George. If you don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God and don't accept him as such, you are going to hell. There is not a single Muslim, Buddhist, or Hindu that is going to heaven because the ideology that they prescribe to is totally antithetical to the Christian faith. And on the other hand, as a Christian, you should know that you're going to heaven. It's called assurance of salvation. And we see the proof for this assurance when we read 1 John chapter 5, verses 12 through 13. He who has the Son has the life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Pretty straightforward. He who believes in Jesus has eternal life. He who doesn't does not have eternal life. It's not, oh, I don't know. Yes, we do know and the Bible assures us of that. Now, I believe that George is an Orthodox Christian and they do not teach complete assurance of salvation, which doesn't make sense to me because when I read the scriptures, it's pretty obvious to me that we do have complete assurance of salvation. A Muslim can go to heaven? Yes. Can a Jewish person go to heaven? 
again, I don't know who goes to heaven or hell. I am not. I am not the guy who decides who's going to heaven or but hell. Does, doesn't 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 your scripture say something about if you're not subscribed to Christianity? Oh you're, yeah, yeah, you're basically yeah. It's a uh, sin you, you, you can only go through the Father uh, through the Son. Yeah. So Christianity believe that through Jesus you could be saved. So the scriptures are pretty clear on that. Jesus is the only way to heaven. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me, meaning through Jesus. Jesus is the only only way to salvation. Allah is not the way. Buddha is not the way. Some other God is not the way. Jesus is the only way. George is jumping around here a little bit, but I think that George himself knows that Jesus is the only way to salvation. There is no other way. I never once talk about because people. Because you're subscribed to the doctrine that perpet perpetuates that information. I'm subscribed to love my neighbor. Not everyone in your religion is. Now, for some reason, there is this silly idea that disagreeing with someone's sinful lifestyle is somehow not loving. I don't know why people correlate these two things. It just doesn't make sense to me how disagreement equals not loving your neighbor. When a child is disobedient to his parents and the parents disagree with the child's lifestyle, do they stop loving the child? No, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And I don't know why people continue to connect these two ideas together. You're on like, are you on like a personal crusade to, to fix something? No, no, because no, no, my no, question no. to you is my question to you is at the end of the day, and I said this specifically, that the, the the parable or the adage that you should live your life by is live and let live. Yep. What is it that is so bothersome? Now this live and let live is a very common and used point of argumentation by many individuals outside of the Christian faith. Now I know that Mike here is using it to defend George, but he very well could have used it to defend Logan Paul. You hear this argument used often to defend homosexuality or really any promiscuous lifestyle that a person may lead that is quote unquote not harming anyone why do you christians care just leave them alone it's always used as some big stomping point and that is because these people know very little about the christian faith as you would expect them to that is because people outside of christianity don't prescribe to the christian faith and we shouldn't expect them to know much and we shouldn't hold them to the same standard that we hold believers to who know much better to answer the question why christians can't live and let live why do we care about someone who's living a promiscuous lifestyle that is not harming anyone well there are many ways to answer that and one of the most common answers is because we are commanded to love others jesus says this many times john 13 34 and you commandment i give you that you love others just as i have loved you you could just open the new testament and it wouldn't take you very long to find a command to love when you love people when you love sinners like jesus did what do you do ah just let them live they're not harming anyone no you tell them that they are living in sin and testify that there is a better life through Jesus Christ. In fact, from our Christian worldview, these people that are supposedly harming nobody by living a sinful lifestyle are actually harming themselves and others by promoting this lifestyle that leads to the eternal fire. And as Christians, it is our responsibility to denounce such a lifestyle and preach freedom in Christ. It's not live and let live. Jesus could have very well lived a happy life as a carpenter. Just let the Jews live their lives. They don't believe you're the son of God, Jesus. Big deal. Let it go. Just let them live their lives, Jesus. They're happy. They're not harming anyone. No. Jesus saw a world drowning in sin and he put himself out there in the front lines and was crucified for it. Jesus' very first sermon when he started his ministry was repent for the kingdom of God is near. It's not live and let live. 
This is especially applicable here in George's case because Logan is his friend and he cares about him. And he probably sees him living this promiscuous lifestyle. And maybe he makes comments about it in a loving way and tells him about Jesus. And maybe Logan thinks, why do you care, George? I'm not harming you or anyone. Well, because I love you. You're my friend. And you are harming yourself by living a lifestyle that leads to hell. And it would be unloving of me if I didn't denounce such a lifestyle and just kept my mouth shut. The perfect standard in Christianity is Jesus. And he did the exact opposite of live and let live. You see, people in this world love Christians that live and let live and just keep their mouths shut. But that's not what the Bible teaches us. And that certainly isn't the example that Jesus said. In John chapter 8, Jesus says, you're slaves to sin, but there is freedom in me. I'm paraphrasing. And what did they try to do? They tried to kill him. Further down in the chapter, Jesus says, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man that has told you the truth. That's why us Christians can live and let live. Because we are commanded to love. We are commanded to speak the truth. That is what the center of all of Christianity did. Jesus. We don't even have to talk about it. But if you notice, I never ever question anybody's beliefs or push them to believe in Jesus. I express my love. And if you express your higher power, I'm all ears. This is where I'll have to disagree with George. I don't want to put a label on somebody that follows Christ, but it seems to me like the kind of Christianity that George prescribes to from what I've seen on the podcast when he speaks about his faith is this kind of progressive Christianity where I don't really speak out much. I just kind of let my actions speak for themselves type of Christianity. And maybe I'm wrong. He might just censor himself a lot and never really express his real views because of the platform he's on, because he'd probably get canceled. You can't just let your life speak for itself. You have to use your words. It's such a progressive and worldly ideology that we as Christians shouldn't speak out. This ideology has a lot of traction in more charismatic circles, and it's a large topic. I could speak on it a lot, but just to touch on it a little bit. Ephesians 5.11 says, Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. I mean, in every single letter, Paul talks about not being ashamed of the gospel and preaching it wherever he goes. And to George's defense, he's doing his best to defend Christianity, and he's not being silent about the slander from Logan also being very gentle about it we see peter in first peter chapter 3 talk about being ready to defend christ and do it with gentleness so that those who revile your good works in christ may be put to shame and that's exactly what's happening here logan paul is slandering jesus he's slandering christianity and he's being shamed for it even by mike who i believe considers himself a christian i don't really know much about his personal life besides the fact that he dated a porn star, which is not a very Christian thing to do, but I don't know, maybe he's a changed man that's between him and God. I think George is being a little too soft here. I want to see more boldness from George. Like Apostle Paul, when he went to Jerusalem and spoke boldly about Jesus to the Jews, not being afraid to be insulted, to be killed. I want to see that boldness from George. By the way, the Holy Spirit gave him that boldness. I, it sounds like you have a misconception about what you think I believe. Buddy, you cannot tell me about misconception and you keep misquoting the Bible and you keep putting me into a, a box that I'm not in. You wait, keep wait, bringing up that I bash gay people all hey. the time. When have I ever done that? Bro, that is a staple of your religion and it's not bashing gay people. It's condemning them but have for you what as, they like. For, That's as George Jinko, as your best friend, as your best friend, have you ever seen me to any straight man or gay man? or any type of person I've have I ever shown any hatred no, ever. No, but you're in the same boat with a large group of people that do. I listen to you. I don't, have I ever bashed that? No. Never. I never would. And I also, I believe that your energy is the same of me. But this is the way I want to, I want all of us to like be together. Like at the end of the day, bro, I can never prove to you that Jesus Christ exists. I can never do that. 
You can never prove that your belief system exists. What we could do is have like-minded conversations and grow from it. Mm. And I just, I want there to be love in the conversation instead of like- I think George is doing a very good job here. Obviously, Logan is his best friend. He's not trying to be hurtful. He's not trying to be offensive, while at the same time, he's trying to defend Christianity within those boundaries. He's kind of being very political and playing the line here, which I don't really blame him given the relationship he has with these guys and the platform he's on. I mean, make what you will of that. Dude, I sit at synagogues and talk to, to rabbis all the time and pick their brains. I sit with Muslim people. They're the most peaceful people. We went so to Saudi who's Arabia. Right? I want you to say it right now. Who's right? Who's whose God who, is real? My God is real in my eyes. Not Allah. I don't believe that Allah is real in my eyes. A lot of Muslims would that, disagree with you. But does that mean I have to disrespect their beliefs? No. There we go. That's what I want to see from George. Straightforward answer. There is only one God. There is only one Jesus. He's the only way to salvation. Allah is not God. You don't have to be disrespectful to people with different beliefs, but at the same time, you don't necessarily have to be nice to people about their beliefs. Being nice is not a biblical command. Muslims and many others are very much deceived, and it's not being disrespectful telling them that. Why can't this just be your life journey and just figure it out yourself? Live and let live. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's, that's, and, that's, and, that's, and that's where I always land. Again, as Christians, we cannot live and let live. We have to speak out. And George here is doing a pretty good job speaking out. I, I, I know. And I know George. And I, and I know very well. Yeah. And I know you could benefit a lot from a therapist. Okay. And noted. I don't think Logan is completely wrong here. There's a reason why consultation exists in the church. We see this in the first churches. People come together, they share their griefs, they seek comfort, they seek support. You can't isolate yourself like a monk and pray all day. You might be able to hack it for a period of time, but you need the community. We are one body. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There's a reason why the physical church exists. The two years that I had the hardest years of my life was this past two years. Did anybody here know this? The only person that was there wasn't family, wasn't friends, wasn't coworkers. It was my Jesus Christ. All right. I think that's a good place to end it. George, thank you for standing up for the Christian faith. I'm sorry you had to go through such a difficult time. I hope it grows your faith and I'm happy that you found solace in Jesus Christ. But please don't be afraid to reach out to members of the Christian community. I don't know if George is a member of a church or if he has Christian mentors in his life, but I highly recommend having these mentors in your life. Now back to the conversation as a whole. Did Logan Paul slander Christianity? Yeah. Is this something new? No. And to all us Christians, it should come as no surprise that the world hates us. There's a reason why Jesus said you will be hated by all because of me. This is nothing new, guys. People out in the world have been slandering and persecuting Christians for thousands of years. And looking at our modern Western world today, I know that you and I have heard much worse said about Jesus and Christianity. And if I was to compare some of the things that you and I have heard said about Christianity to the things that Logan Paul was saying, I would say Logan Paul was being respectful. Christianity is especially slandered in the comedy world from very famous comedians like George Carlin to Louis C.K. They have said some absolutely disgusting things. And even a lot of shows that I know you and I grew up watching have openly mocked Jesus and Christianity. Just to name a few, our family guy, South Park, Rick and Morty. I mean, in general, just Hollywood's portrayal of Christianity has always been sickening. The world has always and will always hate Jesus. This is normal and expected for us Christians. And if you call yourself a Christian and everybody loves you, Maybe you should be skeptical of whether you're truly living out the Christian life. And don't be afraid to stand in the front lines and defend Christianity and Jesus like George did here. If you want to support what I do, please comment, like, share, subscribe. My social media links are in the description below. If you want to reach out, I'm happy to chat, happy to serve. Thank you and may the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you.